Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Blue Star Limited's Q1 FY22 earnings conference call. We have with us today from the management, Mr. Neeraj Basur, Group Chief Financial Officer and Company Secretary of Blue Star Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star followed by zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I'm now glad to hand the conference over to Mr. Neeraj Basur. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Neeraj Basur. Firstly, I would like to wish the best of health for you and your loved ones. And I hope all of you are safe. I will be providing you an overview of the results for Blue Star Limited for the quarter ended June 2021. Financial hi highlights. The quarter commenced on a promising note with a normal summer season coupled with a general improvement in the customer sentiments. However, in the second fortnight of April, the momentum was interrupted by the re resurgence of the second wave of COVID-19. The consequent lockdown-like restrictions imposed in various states continue to disrupt the business through, through the end of May. For the second year in a row, this impacted revenue growth in the peak selling season for our unitary products business. However, the impact was, was relatively less as compared to Q1 FY21 due to the staggered and localized nature of the restrictions and a pickup in business activities as the restrictions were gradually eased in June. Additionally, our experience from last year in managing the business environment under the same circumstances enabled us to handle the disruption with agility and end the quarter on a stronger note. Financial highlights for the quarter ended June 30, 2021 on a consolidated basis are, are being summarized by me now. Revenue from operations for Q1 FY22 grew 68.1% to Rs. 1052.04 crore as compared to Rs. 626.02 crore in Q1 FY21. EBITDA excluding other income and finance income for Q1 FY22 was Rs. 42.23 crore, EBITDA margin of 4% of revenue as compared to Rs. 1.36 crore, EBITDA margin of 0.2% of revenue in Q1 FY21 due to higher scale. PBT before exceptional items was Rs. 19.40 crore in, in Q1 FY22 as compared to a loss before exceptional items of Rs. 29.47 crore in Q1 FY21. Tax expense for Q1 FY22 was Rs. 6.52 crore as compared to a tax credit of Rs. 9.52 crore in Q1 FY21. Net profit for Q1 FY22 was Rs. 12.69 crore as compared to a net loss of Rs. 19.66 crore in Q1 FY21. Carried forward on the book as on June 30, 2021, grew by 8% to Rs. 3,152.30 crore as compared to Rs. 2,918.66 crore as on June 30, 2020. Capital employed reduced to Rs. 969.83 crore as on June 30, 2021 as compared to Rs. 1193.83 crore as on June 30, 2020 due to continued focus on working capital efficiencies. In view of the prudent working capital management and other continuing capital preservation measures, net borrowing as on June 30, 2021 reduced to Rs. 68.47 crore which is a debt equity ratio of 0.08 as compared to a net borrowing of rupees 428.53 crore as of June 30, 2020, which was a debt equity ratio of 0.56 despite short term challenges to the operating cash flows during the quarter. I will now talk about the business highlights for Q1 FY22. First, segment one, electromechanical projects and commercial air conditioning systems. Segment 1 revenue grew 61.7% to Rs. 505.24 crore in Q1 FY22 as compared to Rs. 312.44 crore in Q1 FY21. 
Segment result was rupees 20.03 crore, which is 4% of revenue in Q1 FY22, as against a loss of rupees 10.53 crore, which was 3.4% of revenue in Q1 FY21. Order inflow for the quarter grew by 143.9% to rupees 650.78 crore, as compared to rupees 266.78 crore in Q1 FY21. Electromechanical projects business. The pace of execution of projects was slower due to the phased lockdowns across multiple states, which affected material movement and labor availability at sites. Delays in order finalization due to uncertainties impacted order inflows from the commercial building sector. Muted government expenditure continued to impact order inflows in the infrastructure sector. Inquiries and order inflows from the factories and light industrial sector continued to be encouraging, driven by the Make in India initiatives of the government. We continue to moderate the pace of our execution, basis assessment of customer credit profile and operating cash flow visibility for the ongoing jobs, which enabled an improvement in margins for the business. We will continue to focus on opportunities in the infrastructure sector, such as metro railways, electrical substations and water distribution and sectors such as factories, data centers and warehousing, which are expected to throw up good opportunities in the medium term. Carried forward order book of the electromechanical project business was rupees 2232 crore as on June 30, 2021, as compared to rupees 2040 crore as on June 30, 2020, a growth of 9.4%. Major orders received during the quarter were from Ola Electric and Netmagic IT services. Commercial air conditioning systems. Our commercial air conditioning business registered a growth of 108% as compared to Q1 FY21, albeit on a low base, due to healthy traction from the industrial, government, healthcare, and pharma segments. Key segments such as builders and developers, marriage halls, auditoriums, hotels, and restaurants continue to be impacted by the pandemic and are yet to revise. We continue to maintain our number one position in ducted air conditioning, number two in VRS, and number three in chiller product categories. Major orders bagged in this uh, category in Q1 FY22 were from MMRDA, COVID Hospital, Salcom, Reliance Zoo, Kalinga Institute of Technology, and Adi Chuchanagari Institute of Medical Sciences. International business. Revenue during the quarter grew on the back of substantial normalization of business activities in the market that we operate in. Demand for both air conditioning and refrigeration products improved across SARC and Middle East markets. With elevated vaccination levels in the Middle East and expectations of a good summer, the forecast for this business is very positive. The project's business in Qatar showed encouraging recovery. The operations at the joint venture at Malaysia were impacted during the quarter due to lockdown restrictions imposed there on the resurgence of COVID-19. We continue to explore new markets for business opportunities and focus on the expansion of the Blue Star product range and building brand awareness and brand visibility in different markets that we are present in. I will now talk about segment two, unitary products. Segment two revenue grew 83.9% to rupees 505.37 crore in Q1 FY22, as compared to rupees 274.85 crore in Q1 FY21. Segment result was rupees 21.77 crore, which was 4.3% of revenue in Q1 FY22, as compared to a loss of rupees 3.76 crore, which was 1.4% of revenue in Q1 FY21. Cooling and purification products business. When the lockdown restrictions were lifted in June, severe summer conditions in the northern region supported growth. Further, expansion of conventional channels an increase in the share of business from e-commerce portals complemented the revenue growth. Consequently, our room air conditioner business registered a growth of 58% as compared to last year, while the market grew by around 55% during this period. 
we continue to maintain our market share at 13%. Commercial refrigeration business increased demand from the healthcare, pharma, food processing, and food delivery segments enabled a growth in our commercial refrigeration business as compared to Q1 FY21. With end-to-end -end solutions for vaccine distribution, we have further enhanced and strengthened our brand presence in the pharma and healthcare segments. We continue to maintain a leadership position in deep freezers, storage water coolers, and modular cold rooms. Major orders were back from Biological E, Gland Pharma, Essent Pharma, and Zydus Cadillac, to name a few. I will now talk about Segment 3, Professional Electronics Industrial Systems. Segment 3 revenue grew by 7% to Rs. 41.43 crore in Q1 FY22 as compared to Rs. 38.73 crore in Q1 FY21. Segment results of Rs. 5.56 crore, which were 13.4% of revenue in Q1 FY22, is lower compared with Rs. 10.18 crore, which was 26.3% of revenue in Q1 FY21 due to product mix. Revenue from this segment continues to be driven by opportunities from the BSSI sector for the data security solutions business and in healthcare for medical diagnostic equipment. With the revival of investments in the manufacturing sector, our testing machine business is witnessing growth. Major orders were back from NAN Industries, Central Imaging and Diagnostics, Canada Bank, ICICI Bank, MRS, to name a few. With the wide portfolio of products and solutions forming part of our offerings, the prospects for this business segment continue to be positive. Business outlook. With the capital investment cycle playing out in a significant manner, the demand for our products and services is expected to be robust. The consumer spending continues to be healthy, and despite price increases implemented, we expect to witness growth in demand. We will continue to focus on controlling operating costs and improving working capital efficiencies and operating cash flows. With the vaccination drive expected to pick up momentum, the impact of the third wave, if any, should also be minimal. We therefore believe that the prospects for the ensuing quarters are positive and good. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I am done with the opening remarks. I would like to now pass it back to the moderator who will open the floor to questions. I will try and answer as many questions as, as I can. To the extent I am unable to, we will get back to you via email. With that, we are now open for your questions, please. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to limit their questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for a follow-up. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, Nitin. Uh, good morning. Uh, my first question is that uh, if you can throw some light on the mix of, uh, you know, in segment two, what was the mix uh, of revenue of UCP and other businesses? Uh, even if you don't want to give an absolute number, you know, the, the percentage would do. Uh, you know, just wanted to understand if UCP really saw a much more decline and the other business did well. So if you can throw uh, light on that, that's number one. Uh, and number two, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, margins now, because UCP, uh, I, and we understand this was a more of an impacted quarter, but how you're looking, uh, you know, for the whole year, the UCP margin, uh, because we, uh, you know, sort of had taken price increase, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, it's more of a lean season starting. So, can you throw some light how you're looking at the uh, margin trajectory of UCP segment for this year and uh, should we be able to do double digit next year or it looks for, you know, tough as of now? Uh, those are the two questions. Yeah, thanks, Nitin. I'll try and address both. Yeah, so as you're aware that strategically, as far as a unitary products business segment is concerned, we have been uh, expanding the uh, range of the products as well as the solutions uh, relating to, of course, the 
cooling and purification um, uh, you know uh, range of products that we have so in that context uh, steadily we have uh, the entire uh, room air conditioner uh, range of products um, and the other basket of other products that we have have been uh, changing the mix so as uh, i mean this is not a, a real representative quarter um, however in this quarter around 60% of uh, the segment 2 uh, revenues would be from uh, the room air conditioner business and uh, the remaining is basket of other products that you are aware of so that's the answer to your first question uh, as far as the overall margin profile is concerned of course you are aware that uh, quarter 1 as happened last year as well tends to influence the annual uh, uh, full year's margin pro profile of uh, segment 2 in case quarter 1 uh, doesn't really play out uh, as it should uh, in a proper and a normal summer season but of course you are also aware that we, there is a quarter 3 and quarter 4 which is uh, yet to play out completely as we experienced last year. Uh, we, we believe that and, and you, you, you would have uh, you would remember that last year we ended quarter 4 with a margin profile trajectory in segment 2 of around 8%. We expect to get back to the same level uh, 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 by quarter 4 FY22 of course uh, uh, assuming that there is no third wave disruption or anything like that. So we think uh, the overall uh, normalcy in uh, segment 2 should res get restored by quarter 4 pretty much uh, in line with quarter 4 of F5, 21 levels. Uh, just one clarification, you are saying margin for the UCP for the whole year 8% or for the Q4 8%? I, 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 so my comment is uh, quarter 4 because quarter 1 is a washout in, in some sense. So quarter 4, by the time we reach quarter 4, we should come back on the trajectory of uh, you know, 8% margin for quarter 4. And you're aware quarter 1 and quarter 4 are the two healthy quarters from a margin perspective. So that's what we we are uh, uh, hopeful of. Because that takes the overall margin for the whole year even lesser than 5 or 6, I mean closer to 5, 6%. So, I mean, uh, despite taking so much price increase, I understand the volume loss has happened, but I think uh, we are trying to increase market share here in North uh, uh, you know, how is that response? I understand, you know, we were not able to uh, make the mark because of the impact what we saw. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so so Nidin, this year, because of the abnormality of quarter one, won't be a, the correct year to look at the annualized margin profile. But mathematically, if you calculate, of course, it will be in that range of six, six and a half percent for the full year uh, because of quarter one. So the reason I started by uh, mentioning quarter four is because that is the more normalized level after uh, complete normalcy gets restored hopefully after this vaccination catches up further and there are no further market disruptions and the, uh, the commerce and business goes on as smoothly as it can. Uh, so, so this is what we had also talked about uh, in our uh, last earnings call that pretty much uh, while we expected the impact of price increases that we took in January and then in April to play out uh, to the fullest and show up in the desired you know, margin profile in FY22. But because of now quarter one impact, we do not think that is going to happen. So probably it's quarter uh, next year is a better year to look at. However, the outlook uh, in terms of uh, there is the, the, the macro outlook is, uh, is, is quite uh, positive and uh, there is, uh, you know, there's no reason to believe why uh, the normalized margin profile. So it is more of a quarter one implication that we should uh, uh, we should just isolate and then understand the overall normalcy, which will be uh, different for the rest of the year. Thank you, Nidhi. I'll come back in a few more questions. Thanks, Nidhi. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranjit Sivaram from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, good morning and congrats on good growth uh, in the UCP uh, despite the challenging environment. Um, so, if you look at the overall uh, uh, the, the energy label, uh, uh, the energy label change in uh, room AC, which was expected last year, we were expecting whether that can get postponed to this jam. Is that going to happen, or will it get further? Uh, extended work be because by now you should have some clarity on that, right? Uh, yes, so the, the current um, notification is for this to happen from January 1 of 2022. 
However, as you're aware, that because of again, when the date was announced, obviously the second wave and the second round of lockdowns were not there. Uh, obviously, some discussions, conversations are going on. Maybe closer to the date, we will get to know whether uh, this is the final date or not. Okay, and how much was the price increase taken in one Q? If you can help with that number. Yeah, so so we, we talked about it in the last earnings call as well, Ranjit. So this was uh, we took a five percent uh, price increase in quarter one uh, or calendar uh, first quarter, which is Q4 of last financial year, and three percent uh, towards the beginning of this uh, current first quarter of this financial year. So that's what we have done so far. But sir, despite that, the margins are lower. So what was the reason? Is that because the complete pass through has not happened, or will it come with a lag? So why that margins are still lower despite the price increases? So yeah, you need to keep in mind. See, last year the the degree of cost cuts that we took on the operating cost uh, side were very incisive, including Q4. So we were coming back on the normalized operating cost structure from Q3 of last year. So quarter one last year, quarter two last year, we took some fairly deep cuts across uh, several of our operating cost lines. Uh, now mostly the the cost uh, cost lines, specifically employee costs, which had to be restored back, which restoration started in Q4 last year, have been substantially completed. So now the cost structures are back to almost the normal scales, whereas uh, of course the quarter one um, scale has got impacted, the revenues have got impacted because of the lockdown. So that abnormality is there. Uh, the other way of understanding these results is that despite absorbing back the normalized cost structure in the operating cost lines, uh, we are having, uh, you know, the kind of overall profitability uh, uh, improvement that we have talked about here. So that's another way of looking at it. Okay, sir. I'll join for further questions. Thanks. Sure, Ranjit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sayyad Arafat from Reliance ADA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking the question. So my first question is on online sales. I just want to understand how the market over there and what kind of investment you have done to increase your online sales. And uh, is it AP is more valuable on online channels or how is that? Yeah, so uh, the e-commerce e uh, channel has been, uh, you know, gaining some traction ever since last year because of the uh, shutdown that was happened in the uh, in the in the general trade and modern trade of course so as as of now uh, e-commerce is roughly about 15% uh, as far as the market is concerned uh, our share of e-commerce is also pretty much tracking on a similar line around 13 to 14% so yeah that's showing some traction Okay, fine, sir. And then the next question is on your uh, in-house manufacturing versus outsourcing. So I just want to understand uh, how is that uh, going process after let's just say some buying from China. So what's the outsource and uh, in-house mix in terms of production? So, so our uh, uh, we are maintaining our um, uh, own manufactured share of close to seventy percent. And uh, there are some SKUs that we, we that we do get manufactured through contracts, manufacturers based in India. Um, and as you're aware, the the import content is pretty low now ever since the changes happened in the for the finished uh, items and things. So overall, uh, we continue to maintain the position of uh, pretty much having a substantial part of our overall fulfillment through our own factories, close to 70% now. Fine, sir. That's it for my side. I'll be back again with you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Tulsian from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, very good morning. Uh, my first question is uh, pertaining to the uh, ASPs in the room AC segment, uh, how they have changed. Uh, because what is happening is we have rolled out price hikes, uh, but at the same time, we are aggressively trying to increase our market share in the affordable range. Uh, which you gave us an update was close to 70% of your sales in fourth quarter. So if you can share uh, how the ASPs have moved uh, uh, due to this mix, uh, change in mix and where is the share of affordable uh, range ACs right now? 
Yeah, so Sandeep, uh, obviously there are uh, these counter pressures in the market where uh, on the one side uh, because of commodity price increases, pretty much all players have been compelled to course correct on the pricing which we talked about uh, uh, earlier as well. So between Q4 of last year, Q1, early Q1 of this year when the season started, uh, we have taken price corrections. Uh, at the same time, obviously, since uh, this uh, lockdown has caused disruption, the overall pricing pressure remains from an ASP point of view. So part of it also gets reflected in terms of discounts and other incentives that are then uh, kind of offered. So uh, the full impact of price increase or the proper impact of price increases will uh, probably start becoming visible from Q3 onwards when the overall uh, market normalcy resumes. This, uh, this quarter, again, because of these... Uh, unforeseen uh, uh, disruptions is not really the right quarter to have a view on the, uh, I mean, certainly the ASPs are not normalized for this quarter. They will settle down, they should settle down once we start entering the festival season, pretty much in Q3. That's how we are uh, looking at it, this, uh, this, this aspect at this point in time. Uh, the mass premium products are doing very well. Uh, the entire range that we talked about earlier, it has gone down quite well with all our, uh, our dealers, distributors, and they're very happy with the extended range. Now they have very competitive in terms of the uh, the coverage, the features, the price points, and uh, so they have far uh, a much better portfolio to offer, which is far more competitive. And like again, we 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 told you that uh, between March and early April, we did sense and we experienced some very good traction. Uh, later in June, uh, end of towards end of uh, first quarter, also again we witnessed some good traction. So we are quite uh, optimistic and hopeful that once normally is, is restored, uh, this uh, entire range will uh, will do very well. And that's again uh, something closer to the festival season that we will find. Got it. So if I got that correctly, uh, so the eight percent price hikes that you took cumulatively in the first four months were not fully reflected in the quarter due to higher discounts. And that should uh, normalize uh, by festive season, right? Yes, to some extent, yes. It will start getting corrected out now as we get into quarter three, quarter four. Okay. I have uh, two more questions. Uh, one is on the strategy of entering or making a dent in the North India market. Uh, you did make a comment in the press release saying uh, that uh, you know severe weather conditions have helped, helped you gain some market share or help you grow better than the other regions. Uh, uh, where you are present. So if you can share a little bit of update, where is it in terms of total share versus your other regions, North India, and uh, what is the strategy of growing market share over there going forward? Uh, second question uh, is pertaining to the investments in the PLI scheme, uh, where I think by 15th September, uh, most participants are expected to submit their proposals. So which uh, components we are uh, planning to participate and what can be the outlay over there? Uh, thank you. Yeah, so as far as the North India market is concerned, uh, yes, of course, we have, uh, uh, it's played out well for us. And one of the reasons, uh, you know, this has done in quarter one, uh, we could uh, derive the benefit or realize the benefit of uh, extended focus on North has played out. So now, despite the fact that, you know, we had rains in South and all that, so South didn't uh, uh, fire or trigger as much as normally it does in the peak summer season. So North is, uh, uh, you know, now about 40% of what we, in quarter one I'm saying, about 40% of our overall sales. And then uh, the other regions are, uh, so in fact it's done better than South in quarter one as far as our North, uh, the share of North is concerned. Uh, as far as your question on PLI investment is uh, concerned, uh, you are aware that PLI is now available only for components and not for finished products. We are evaluating the possibilities of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the feasibility and possibilities of making an application for certain components. That plan is not yet fully uh, firmed up, and probably by the time we meet you after Q3, Q2 results, we will, we should be able to give you a more definitive statement there. But yes, to the extent of the PLI benefits can be realized on the component side, we will definitely. We will be interested and keen to look at that for sure. Sure, got it. So just uh, the comparable number for 40% North share, what was it uh, last year? Uh, last it? year would have been close to about 35, 30, 35. Last year, North and South were pretty much equal. So this year, North is a shade better because of extended summer, which is what we have talked about in the press release as well. Okay, 
Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Charanjit Singh from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you can just help us understand the price laddering, you know, in terms of where does in the mass premium uh, Blue Star stack up versus the competitors, the larger competitors like maybe Voltas and the other players, what's the kind of pricing differential as of now? Uh, if you can just uh, touch upon that. Yeah, so currently, uh, you know, the, this range of products and probably my reference point is more like a 1.5 ton three star uh, machine or that family of machine. We will be, we are quite uh, competitive when it comes to the top uh, three or four players are concerned. Pretty comparable, you know, the difference uh, between our price and um, another two or three players will be very, very nominal. Uh, of course, with a couple of players, we may still be about three to five percent higher, about three percent higher, not more than that. So overall, as far as the market uh, positioning is concerned, this is a highly price competitive range now that we have, and very acceptable as far as the market is concerned because we are we are still the, the reason we call it mass premium is because indeed there are uh, there are differentiators when it comes to the quality side or performance or the overall uh, experience that the customer will get. So uh, that is only the one reason why uh, there's a little bit of uh, uh, difference as compared to a couple of players, but more or less we are, we are in sync and in line. Okay. So on southern market, you know, because uh, there are still concerns from Kerala and the uh, other parts in the southern market. So yeah. if you can touch upon uh, what, what are your thought process in terms of going forward? How do you see that southern market can pan out and uh, also on the inventory levels where we are right now and uh, you think that it may take longer to get it liquidated? So you see southern market in Q1 uh, has got impacted because of the twin reasons of early rains and some very extensive rains in Kerala and parts of South India plus the pandemic driven disruptions in Karnataka and a couple of more states. So that is the real reason why the South relative to its, own, its potential uh, in Q1 has not uh, really done that well. So we don't see any, uh, any, any macro reason to feel concerned about South. It will come back uh, on its normal trajectory once uh, the situation stabilizes uh, by the festival time and uh, it will again come back on its normal selling potential and we are very comfortable with that. The last question from my side is on the commercial ref. If you can touch upon that category, you know, how it did in Q1 and um, how we see it uh, going forward, you know, contributing during the uh, remaining year in FI22. Yeah, so we, we have mentioned about commercial refrigeration uh, segment and category. So here uh, are the traditional customer customers, which, uh, you know, for example, ice cream manufacturers, uh, or uh, QSR restaurants, hotels. Obviously, as you can imagine, these uh, traditional customers are still not uh, normalized. They will take some time uh, to come back on their usual uh, you know, trajectory of buying. However, very encouragingly for this particular segment, we are seeing good traction from, uh, from pharmaceutical, uh, the healthcare sector, government, um, and uh, so, they, so these are the new segments which have uh, emerged very well. In addition to, of course, uh, the traditional segments which continue to be there. Um, the uh, vaccine supply chain as of now is continues to offer good opportunities, uh, both in terms of uh, vaccine storage solutions, right from cold rooms to uh, equipment which is needed at the vaccine storage center, as well as vaccine transport transporters that are needed at the vaccination centers. So uh, that is continuing and uh, obviously we, we think that uh, as the vaccination phase increases further, certainly for the next couple of quarters or little more than that, this uh, traction should, should be there. Obviously a bulk of buying has already happened so it may not continue in the same, with the same momentum. Uh, but this is one area and then of course uh, the newer segments we entered in in terms of the supermarket refrigeration as well as uh, the, the overall retail uh, refrigeration solutions is also showing some encouraging signs. So all in all 
commercial refrigeration is a segment uh, or a category we are we continue to be quite uh, optimistic about so sir can you highlight any any numbers in terms of growth rate and uh, are these you know new categories are able to offset the dip in the traditional uh, customer base and uh, what the kind of growth expectations you might have on the commercial side so overall generally uh, uh, where we always uh, discuss and talk about segment as a whole right? these are all uh, part and components of segment 2 uh, but needless to say as i mentioned towards the beginning of the call now about 40% of segment 2 comprises of uh, a basket of these products of which the commercial refrigeration is definitely a, an important constituent so overall uh, the segment does continue to be significantly uh, you know it, it gets mitigated when it comes to the strategic diversification of the product portfolio between room acs and commercial uh, refrigeration range of products and uh, that's that, that's expected to continue to strengthen oh, uh, thanks for taking my questions that's all thank you thanks really. thank you the next question is from the line of anupam gupta from iifl capital please go ahead um hi niruj thanks for the opportunity um so my first question is on the uh, for the product rec business basically uh, based on your uh, current inventory levels and uh, the procurement cycle let's say assuming um, our commodity price has remained here um what sort of price increases would we uh, would we need assuming the uh, market is uh, coming back what sort of price increases will be needed to restore margins to slightly older levels of like 9% plus um and also if you can include uh, assuming that uh, your uh, energy labeling change happens from january what sort of price increase will that require uh, over and above so anupam uh, as far as the inventory levels are concerned uh we uh we think uh, and this i'm talking about the market not uh, certainly as our own market inventory situation is also so it's not uh, something alarming um end of june i'm talking about so it's not something which is alarming and we think the inventory levels will normalize for us it, it should start normalizing early q3 uh, pretty much on the lines of what we were able to achieve last year so that's quite comfortable um and uh, even as far as the market is concerned we think uh, by the end of q3 or towards middle of or end of q3 once the festival season starts the market inventory levels should also normalize so inventory is uh, unlikely to be a, a key concern uh, over the next 2 3 months it will be over as far as that is concerned uh, we are just watching the entire restoration of normalcy across the uh, rest of the states and we just anyway it's q2 so it doesn't make sense to take a pricing decision uh, in q2 uh, we will uh, watch closely and probably around diwali time or so, slightly a little ahead of diwali is when we will uh, we will take a view whether any further price corrections are required in order to uh, restore the margin profile uh, what we are expecting at that mm-hmm. time so it's a little early to talk of price increase we will take that call probably in q3 okay and the energy label change would require what sort of cost increases for you so energy label change uh, at this point in time that entire portfolio has not been finalized it's in the process of getting finalized because like i mentioned earlier the right, right now the date is january 122 that mm-hmm. clarity also we will be uh, we will get in q3 as to hmm. the entire range and then obviously we will stick to our uh, mass premium pro- portfolio profile uh, but hmm. i guess that uh, that clarity we will get and we will be able to share with you around q3 okay um understand and the second question for the project business um what sort of growth are you now looking at given that obviously there was some impact in first quarter but should things normalize fully from the second quarter onward and also will the normalize uh, the margins recover also uh, in the balance part of the year what levels are you looking at yeah for the project business see the traditional customer segments uh, which is buildings and commercial real estate and private infrastructure uh, we think is is going to take uh, slightly longer to normalize uh, so that that part we are we have been watchful for the last 15 months 18 months we continue to be so and all for all the right reasons uh, so that will continue so as far as so so as far as that uh, segment is concerned we see some very interesting and healthy traction from light industry and light commercial so the factories uh, which are uh, getting committed and which are getting uh, expansions on the factory space is is a good area for us to get in 
uh, e-commerce warehousing space is another good one to look at. Data centers is the third segment where NEP works are being uh, looked at. The fourth one is the uh, government funded infra segment. We are uh, participating quite aggressively, be it metro rail, airports and so on. Those are good projects. So it's a, it's a mixed bag there. There is a good uh, replacement of uh, some of the traditional customer segments uh, by some of these newly emerging customer segments, which I talked about. And uh, hopefully once the credit cycles and the credit uh, profile of the traditional customer starts to uh, starts to strengthen, improve or come back on track, those uh, projects will come. We have uh, differentiated ourselves, you're aware, across two main uh, platforms. Firstly, the, you know, the integrated MEP services that we provide vis-a-vis -vis some other players. And there are not too many national level players who are now able to offer integrated MEP services and you're aware of that. And then of course the overall our ability to um, uh, you know from an integrated <coughs> integrating not just MEP but also uh, supplementing it with the equipment that we manufacture. So those are some of the differentiators uh, over some smaller regional players which will keep, uh, keep helping us and the healthy order book is an indication of that uh, over the last two years. We have not really seen a degrowth in the order book. Uh, despite being watchful, careful, cautious, and uh, highly uh, cash flow and uh, credit profile centric approach right. that we have taken in that segment. So the margin profile, that's the reason you see very stable margin profiles uh, now hovering in the range of 4, 4.5% and, a half percent, and hmm. uh, we see no reason why these uh, should not come back to 5, 5.5% five levels uh, as more normalcy resume. So that's okay. on the segment one uh, okay. business dynamics. Yeah, that's helpful. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Neeraj, if you could uh, give us an update on how has uh, the, the traction been in uh, June and uh, uh, the month of July. Uh, this is on the unitary coolie product segment. Yeah, so the month of June, Bhavin, so actually the lockdown started to ease off towards the first week of June. So we were thinking there were three weeks in June and uh, within that constraint three weeks and also considering that the monsoon season pretty much uh, settles in in uh, South and West India. Uh, despite that, it has been a very encouraging experience in those three weeks. In, uh, specifically that we've talked about uh, in our press release also the no North Indian market, which continues to uh, have uh, uh, extended summer, uh, which spills over into the month of July. And uh, similarly, we have seen, uh, you know, that experience flow into the month of July as well, uh, specifically in the northern part of the country. So it's, it's encouraging. And uh, that's one of the reasons if you see relative to last year, uh, the, uh, the revival and uh, restoration of normal business activities from our perspective is far faster and uh, quicker uh, this year. Probably, of course, we also had experience of last year. So, uh, so overall, we uh, we are uh, reasonably satisfied with uh, what has happened in uh, the month of June, uh, in the backdrop of the disruptions that were uh, in the pre preceding 45 days or so. Sure, thanks. But the the second question is in the uh, margins for the professional segment. I mean, historically, we have been seeing uh, north of 20 percent. But over the last uh, two, three quarters, uh, the trajectory has been downward uh, 13 and a half in the last quarter. Any uh, reason specific, uh, if you could give us, and what could be a sustainable level that one, one should be building on? Uh, yeah, so, you know, if you look at a longer, longer tenure uh, margin performance for that segment, it, it ranges from 15 to 18 percent. So that's more like a median margin performance, 15 to 18 percent. We are hovering now in the range of 13 and a half, 14 as of now. In the last few years, uh, I think FY19 or FY20, we did get a couple of uh, large orders with healthier margin profiles. The nature of that business is like that. It will always have, uh, every now and then, there'll be some one-off large orders uh, which, will, which will bump up the margin profile over the uh, ensuing two or three quarters when those orders are fulfilled. And you will see a sudden bump up going up to 20% or 18%, 19% like that. Uh, so, so a little bit of variation is to be expected in the margin profile of this segment, but yeah, its range it will stay in a, in that median range of around 15%. Yeah, 
sure. A couple of housekeeping questions. Uh, uh, on the interest cost, uh, in your press release, you mentioned that uh, debt has come down to 68 crores. Uh, uh, but when we see uh, 11 crores of interest costs, so if you could help us understand that. Yeah, so, so the debt has been coming down progressively. Uh, and if you compare uh, the interest expense quarter one last year with quarter one this year, you will see the, the, the reduction more starkly there. Because quarter one last year, we were building up debt. Quarter one, we had to resort to debt to uh, bring in sufficient liquidity on the balance sheet. But after that, we were pretty much done. So, uh, so if there's a progressive reduction in debt, so that's why you see you will see uh, you know an overall uh, reduction in the overall cost of financing as well as well as the quantum of money that we need. Uh, the uh, the the investment corpus that we are maintaining again uh, to uh, ring fence liquidity on the balance sheet stays in the range of around 250 to 300 crores, uh, which of course generates. Uh, interest income or investment income which gets grouped in some other line in regulation 33. So uh, really speaking, you've got to look at the net picture uh, from that perspective. Sure. No, so let me rephrase the question. So 10.7 uh, crores interest in the current quarter or uh, let's say 44 crores on an annualized basis on a gross debt of 68 crores is something that uh, if you could help me reconcile. So, uh, you, so you, you are you are looking at net debt here. So, 68 crore is the net debt level. Okay. So, if you could help me on the gross debt, that uh, maybe that could answer my question. Yeah. So, gross debt at end of uh, June was around 450 crores. Okay. Ah, yeah, that answers the question. Yeah. The other so way the of understanding this equation is you got to net off the investment income from the interest expense. So, just for this equation, so there is about. Four and a half, five crores of interest income uh, in this quarter, five crores. Sure. And lastly, if you could I'm guide sorry, on. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, may we request you to come back in queue for follow up questions? Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Jain from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, so my first question is on uh, on price hikes. So, you know, earlier on the call, you made a comment that by Q4, uh, you feel confident to go to 7 to 8% margins. But uh, but can you just indicate what kind of, uh, you know, a cost inflation is still not passed on in spite of the 8% price hike that you have taken? Because, you know, um, our understanding is that at least 4 to 5% gap is still there. So can you please uh, help and triangulate that? So, so Ashish, uh, just you can, you can reflect on uh, one comment which I made uh, in response to a question uh, raised by you know one of the uh, participants short while back. So while price increases have been taken, 8% has been taken between two quarters, but in quarter one because of disruption obviously there has been a discounting impact also. So that is not the right uh, comparison to study the absorption impact of price increases. Uh, we will just wait for another quarter or so to allow the full impact of price increases to settle down. So by Q3, is like I said before, Diwali ahead of Diwali is when we will decide. Uh, we will get a very real sense of once inventory is normalized and everything is back on track fully. We want that to happen first. Then we will recompute whether there is any uh, deficit still left in terms of the component and the commodity price increases that needs to be bridged. And we will take that call ahead of the festival season. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, if, if if I can just you know uh, uh, dig a bit deeper into it, what I'm trying to understand is even if I let's say ignore the discounts and all for a minute, uh, which I understand impacted your Q1 margins, but just from a maths of it point of view, is eight percent enough to offset the commodity you have seen, or uh, or there is a gap needed? Whether we take it and uh, the timing of it, I understand is a response to how market is, but just from a maths of it, is there a gap left, or we are well covered? So, so Ashish, if you're looking at, uh, let's say, Q2, Q3, we have firstly inventory, whatever had to be uh, created, produced, or acquired for, uh, it's, it's going to be sufficient till Q3, like I mentioned, because by Q3, we are going to come back on track in terms of inventory level. So, so the, the good news is we don't need to buy immediately in the next few months for at least the next uh, one and a half quarters. Uh, this will be a question probably for Q4 and Q1 next year uh, and, and depending on how the commodity price cycles behave at that point in time, including ocean freight, which seems, which has been there the entire uh, anomaly in the entire uh, international logistics scenario, uh, 
so we we hope that by the time we close the calendar year uh, and by the time we are ready to procure again uh, that is the time we will work out uh, what kind of uh, you know cost to price equation requires us to consider but right now we are just looking at the inventory which is already uh, so the commodity prices are already priced in the, in the the costed in the inventory that we are holding so that's what we are looking at at this point in time got got okay sir that's useful thank you so much thanks thank you the next question is from the line of kunal shet from bnk securities please go ahead yeah hi thank you sir for the opportunity so my question was regarding the market share uh, you know targets that we have for the year you know uh, do we hold on to the market share targets for uh, you know overall for the room ac segment as well as for the north market that we had set out in q4 yeah so so uh, uh, kunal we are currently at 13% uh, we we think by the time we end the year we should we should reach a 14% level see our our stated uh, this thing is we have to get closer to 15% so around 13 and a half 14% is what we we think we should be able to close the financial year with and then we we'll take it forward from there so we don't see any concern in holding off to that 13 and a half 14% for rest of the year okay uh, sh sure and secondly sir uh, what is the kind of uh, you know growth that we are now building in in the room ac market for the year given the disruption that we have seen in the you know, first quarter yeah so we again we are quite optimistic we think uh, uh you know and this is based on our last year experience uh while uh, we think uh, market might uh, might be just flat over fy20 we are not looking at fy21 fy20 market should can should be just about flat over last year if you want to understand market should should be around 25 30% growth is what our sense is for the rest of the year for the entire and uh, our own sense is we should we would want to look at at least 10% growth for uh, uh, for rest of the year over fy20 over fy21 around 30 35% growth uh, for the full year so that we are quite uh, again uh, optimistic about and this this is the value growth that we are talking about right because uh, there is a lot of commodity impact uh, in the current year as well we we always look at value growth yes okay okay sure thank you thank you so much best of luck for the future thank you thank you the next question is from the line of mayank bandari from nirmal bank securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity uh, sir uh, in the 55% growth you have highlighted uh, what would have been the uh, growth for the inverter ac or what would be the composition of your uh, wix in terms of inverter and non inverter yeah so inverter ac i will tell you the mix uh, growth i may not have readily with me uh, the mix of inverters for us in q1 fy22 is about 58% uh, market was around 65% for inverters we are having some very good traction for our fixed speed ac which is around 42% so that's that's our uh, mix for inverter and fixed speed yeah. okay and secondly sir uh, in terms of competitive intensity as we have seen uh, two consecutive uh, summers being bought out and uh, we uh, were anticipating larger players gaining more share than some of the smaller players uh, so uh, how how is the uh, competition in the market panning out any comment on that well competitive intensity again we have to see in the context of you know how different players uh, uh, you know get to restore their normalcy and what kind of inventory levels they are holding on so um it is it continues to be high i mean there is no let down on competitive intensity because see, everyone again planned for growth in quarter 1 uh, this planning start you're aware in quarter 3 quarter 4 of previous year so when you plan for growth you make some investments you make you take some position and then suddenly when this disruption of this kind of a scale hits then a lot of these plans get disrupted as well and that puts all sorts of uh, unplanned uh, competitive pressures on everyone uh, but if we go back to our experience from last year uh, we were all pleasantly surprised with the normalcy that got uh, restored by q3 so we see no reason why that should not be done again now in the backdrop of enhanced vaccinations and uh, uh, basically customer sentiments and market normalcy 
if that gets restored, we see no reason why we should all not be gearing for again a good Q3, Q4 and then uh, look forward to FY23. Okay. And lastly, sir, uh, I remember we had highlighted uh, opportunity related to vaccine uh, of about 200 crore market size. Uh, and uh, so uh, any con any quantum you can give, like how much revenue would have booked by now or how much you are anticipating in the next two quarters related to vaccine opportunity? So, so vaccine opportunity, we talked about 150 to 200 crore market opportunity last year. And uh, since last year itself, we have been... Uh, uh, realizing part of that opportunity, about you can say 75 to 100 crores uh, annualized uh, so far. But this is uh, just keep in mind, this won't be a perpetual, uh, indefinite. Uh, this will be a finite period opportunity. But till till this time, it is there. We uh, we are aware we are one of the leading players in all these products and solutions. So we will definitely uh, have whatever impact it it will have. But it is a finite opportunity. Mm, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Basur for closing comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, with this, we conclude uh, this quarter's earnings call. Do feel free to revert to us in case any of your questions were not fully answered. And we will be happy to provide you additional details by email or in person. Uh, I wish you the best of health and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. We'll speak with you next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Blue Star Limited, that concludes this conference call for today. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.